Hey guys. All right. Well, in today's video, we're going to be working on installing our cable chain. And this is going to keep our spindle, motor wiring, our power draw bar hoses, uh, our Z motor, limit switches, and all of that. It's going to keep it uh, so it doesn't get all tangled up and keep it nice and neat in this cable tray. So all I did was I just fabricated a couple of brackets and we're just going to mount it like so and then I'll put another bracket on the back like this. So as it goes up and down it'll keep everything nice and neat. So I shot some video making these brackets. Um, really it's pretty straightforward. I just you could use some uh, inch and an eighth quarter inch bar but I had some scrap laying around so I just cleaned up the edges and uh, bored some holes. So I'm going to get this all set up and we're going to bore some holes for mounting. But as when I'm doing that, take a look at this video I shot early of making these brackets. Alright, so here we are back on the X2. I just took a couple of pieces of scrap aluminum I had laying around for these brackets. Uh, these are quarter inch thick and it was about a two and a half inch wide piece. I split it down the middle and now I'm just cleaning up the edges. Uh, as you can see the limitations of the X2 here, I can only go about four inches so I'm, these pieces are five inches long so I'm having to uh, move them about in order to get the edges cleaned up but those are the kind of things you face when you're on a machine that doesn't have but a four inch by eight inch work envelope and you can see the reason for the new build so now I just changed out the end mill with the longer one here and I'm just cleaning up the ends where I cut them to length this originally was a six inch long piece and I cut them to five inches I suggest that you get some uh, inch and a half bar stock maybe and make your brackets out of that. Save all of this uh, machining there. Uh, next I'm going to bore a couple of holes for the actual drag chain to bolt to. The drag chain uses uh, countersink screws. So the actual size of the jack drag chain kind of dictated what size screws I was going to use um, and they're M6 a little bit bigger than I thought was needed but that's the countersink so uh, that's what I'm going with and then on the other end I'm just drilling a couple of through holes here uh, to mount to the actual mill. Alright, these are the two holes that need to be tapped for the drag chain to bolt to, those countersink head screws. Uh, so I'm just tapping these four holes, making sure the screw fits well. And again, this is an M6 by 1.0. There we go. All right, so now I'm going back out to the mill and I've laid out where the holes need to be drilled. So I'm going to just drill an eighth inch hole first and then come back with the uh, hole to drill for the M6 screw. As you can see, I've taped my envelope back up there to try to catch all the shavings that come out of drilling these holes. And then that way you don't have such a mess to clean up because those cast iron shavings there they'll get everywhere.
Okay, now I'm going in there with my M6 by 1.0 tap. Got the holes tapped. Let's see if we can get this bracket mounted here. Uh, for these mounting holes, I'm again using M6, but these are just socket head screws. And I did not drill all the way through the casting there. I only went in about a half inch. And you can see, turned out pretty good. Uh, now I'm gonna lay out for the back here. We're gonna punch these and also get these holes drilled. Uh, pretty much the same procedure. I'm just taping up my envelope there. I tell you, this little envelope's getting a lot of use here lately. But it really, it does save you from getting everything everywhere and you've already got oil on your ways and stuff so you really don't want to get all those shavings all in there so it really saves you a lot of uh, hassle later on so I'm drilling through these holes actually go through and then I'm coming back here and I'm going to tap it again with the M6 by 1.0 alright we're all done we can get this mounted. Same M6 socket head screws here in the back. And that wraps up the install. So we've got our cable chain installed. Not very difficult, just a couple brackets. Um, I think that's going to be real sturdy right there. And then we can take and we can run some of our hoses through here. We can run our limit switches wiring through here, our stepper motor. Uh, we're gonna have some air hoses going through there for our power draw bar. Our motor, spindle motor cable. Uh, there's gonna be quite a bit going through here. Uh, this is 50 millimeters wide and 25 millimeters thick. So it's a one inch by two inch basically. Get a look at the front here. About like that. Looks pretty good. Pretty secure and flexible. Now this will come down. Uh, here's the half mark right here. And this will come down to about right here. And that's going, this will be tucked up inside. And then this loop right here should come down to just above the limit switch. So everything should clear. Uh, I think it's going to make for a nice, neat configuration. So that wraps up the video for the cable drag chain install. Uh, pretty straightforward, just a couple of simple brackets and drilling a few holes. But it sure is going to make life a little bit better when the mill's running to keep all that stuff up and out of the way. Um, I tried to keep the cable drag chain up away from the chips so I won't have to worry about it clogging up or anything like that. Uh, I'm gonna run these wires here at the bottom. Once I get they come out I'll tuck them behind the column there and hopefully keep them away from all the chips. Uh, stay tuned. I've got a lot of questions about the bad stepper motor so I may do a quick video and kind of get more in depth into that and see if I can answer a few of the comments and questions on the previous video if you have any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment thanks for watching the video please subscribe to the YouTube channel and most importantly be safe